they, there have been a tremendous number of advances in terms of treating with wounds. And it, start, it goes right from the beginning. The most important step is debreeding, which is the most poorly performed uh, step in wound care. The trick is to get back to normal tissue with normal colors. Uh, we train residents, so, so we simplify it. They have to be red, white, or uh, red, I'm sorry, red, uh, red, white, or yellow. Anything else is, is, should be removed. And then the next, so that, this requires very aggressive surgery. Most people who debride wounds are thinking about the reconstruction, and they're scared that if they take off too much, then they won't know how to fix it. The problem is if you leave sick or dead tissue or infected tissue behind, it's not going to regenerate. You've got to get rid of it. The new tools that are available for us for debriding include a hydrosurgical tool uh, made by Smith & Nephew called uh, the VersaJet, and it literally shoots water at about 15,000 miles of, uh, per hour, and it's a narrow jet of fluid creating a vacuum that sucks up the fluid in it. And it allows you, much like a planer, to plane layer after layer of tissue with very accurate control. Then there are now ultrasonic devices that allow you to debride as well. And their advantage is they're not quite as accurate as the VersaJet, but what they do is they uh, destroy what we call biofilm, which is the, uh, the constructs that bacteria put together to protect themselves from antibiotics and from white cells. So we have those tools to help us debride. Then we have tools to help us uh, promote wound healing after we've cleaned up the wounds, and those are negative pressure devices, which uh, apply subatmospheric pressure to the wound via a sponge or a cloth, and this promotes uh, a healing by getting rid of edema, which improves the circulation. It also deforms the cells so that they multiply faster. And then it also controls a bacterial proliferation. So it brings blood supply, it stimulates cells to proliferate, and it, uh, um, and it, uh, and it prevents infection. The, the, next, the next step is to try to stimulate wound healing further with a, a biological material, such as growth factor or a cultured skin that can produce the whole gamut of growth factors. And there are a number of products out there that we use to stimulate it. And once we have a healthy, clean wound, uh, then we can choose the normal uh, ways of, re of closing it. And this includes letting it heal by itself, uh, covering it with a skin graft, covering it with a flap, or, or doing a selective or uh, localized amputation. And by using all those tools, we've been able to save, as I mentioned before, 97% of the wounds when the normal average in this country is immediate amputation of a diabetic foot ulcer 25% of the time. So here we are going into the hyperbaric center. And you can see we have four chambers. Let me take one down. I'll take one of them. Uh, hyperbaric delivers oxygen at two atmosphere of pressure, and it uh, stimulates new b blood vessel growth at the site of the wound. Patients come in for a 90-minute dive, and they get anywhere from 20 to 40 dives for a particular treatment. That would mean once a day, five days a week, for a month to six weeks.